We begin with some stunning new revelations about the attack on the U.S. mission in Benghazi, which killed the U.S. ambassador and three other Americans. While Hillary Clinton has been a lightning rod for criticism of the way the Obama administration handled the attack, hundreds of pages of declassified testimony from top U.S. military commanders now show that the U.S. military was unprepared to prevent the attack, defend against it, or come to the rescue of the diplomats. Let's bring in our CNN foreign affairs reporter, Elise Labich. He's been going through these pages. What are you finding out, Elise? Well, Wolf, these transcripts offer fresh insight into military decision-making the night of the Benghazi attack and reveal critical gaps in the military's ability to respond. The Pentagon was ill-prepared to respond to the attack in Benghazi, where four Americans died, according to newly declassified testimony by the commanders who directed rescue efforts. Republican Congresswoman Martha Roby chaired the closed-door hearings. We very clearly um, established that we weren't prepared, and it was because of the lack of communication in the days and months leading up to this. Despite White House claims they beefed up security for the 9-11 anniversary, America's top general, Martin Dempsey, testified, I don't remember Libya coming up specifically, on a call with President Obama and his national security advisors to discuss potential threats on 9-11. In the run-up to September 11th, the threat streams took us other places, other than Libya, he said. Which is why then-Defense Secretary Leon Panetta had military aircraft stationed hours away in Europe. This was pure and simple. In the absence, as I said, of any kind of advance warning, a problem of distance and time. But Carter Ham, then the top commander of U.S. forces in Africa, pushed for more intelligence assets. Concerned eastern Libya was becoming a hotbed of extremism. I don't know that I would go so far as to say it would have prevented the attacks that occurred on September 11th, he said. But it won't surprise you that as a military commander, I wanted more resources. The mobs we've seen on the outside of these embassies are a small minority. They're the ones who have largely lost in these emerging democratic processes. Ham's testimony contradicts the administration's early claims made by then U. Ambassador Susan Rice. The attack grew out of a spontaneous protest, saying he, Panetta, and Dempsey all quickly came to believe it was terrorism. Then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton famously dismissed the origins as irrelevant. The fact is, we had four dead Americans. Was it because of a protest, or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? The commanders all questioned the decision by Ambassador Chris Stevens to get rid of a military security team a month before the attack, suggesting it could have helped protect him that night. Now, the House Armed Services Subcommittee report comes out tomorrow. One interesting thing General Dempsey revealed in his testimony, Wolf, is that the U.S. military is not authorized to kill any of the suspects. They have to be captured alive, even though the State Department labeled them and Anshar al-Sharia, the organization believed to be responsible as a terrorist group. Yeah, interesting stuff. I know you're still going through this, some of those documents, at least.